Hey everybody, thank you for joining me at Border City Rock Talk, where you get some great interviews, some great interviewees, with sometimes a comedic touch. Depends on if uh, my interviewees are funny or not, because I'm not. Anyways, today I'm joined from by a fellow Canuck, Priya Panda. How are you, Priya? I am great. I'm doing well. I can't complain with the sunshine pouring in from the windows. So you know what? I I, I just realized that I was just actually creeping your neighborhood, mm -hmm. your old neighborhood in Toronto. I mean, I was just in that neighborhood. I didn't realize you moved to California. What would make you move to that hellhole? Yeah, uh, good question. I mean, um, you know what? Honestly, if you want like a basic reason, it was just because I love 80s hair metal and I just want to be in the epicenter of it when um, I've always wanted to be in the middle of where it all, you know, kind of took off and became a scene. Obviously, that scene doesn't really exist now by any no. stretch, like the way people describe, you know, Sunset Boulevard and the whiskey and all those things. Yeah. Um seems like probably a lot different maybe even a far cry from those days but damn like every other week you get to see every band you love here so like yeah. the first month I moved here I got to see Vane which is like my all-time favorite wow. um, band and yeah so it's just it's been fun to immerse yourself in all of that stuff of course that's not a reason to maybe here forever but i enjoy it for now so well, i mean you certainly didn't move there for the weather we know that right no it's, it's, <laughs> it's so yeah anyways uh in the sioux here i'm right on the border with michigan as uh, my viewers know um we're, we're worried about a, a winter kind of a blast coming in so well you know what they call it here in canada now? i'm not sure if you keep in touch with it's, it's a weather event Mm. It's, really, it's really ridiculous. It's not a storm anymore. It's a weather event. So everything's an event these days. Oh man, we have an event. Events used to be concerts and um, theater performances and like fun stuff. Now an event is <laughs> something. Yeah, it's just it's you don't know what it means unless you. Yeah. Anyways, so thanks for uh, for joining us here, and we'll talk a little bit about uh, diamonds. Uh, your last album with them was, ironically, titled Diamonds, um, and your the fact checkers tell me that you got to get on your guy you spelled uh, diamonds wrong but anyways um <laughs> it was kind of funny when i was i was searching you out for an interview uh, about i don't know it was about seven months ago i interviewed a fan of yours jenna from the paradise kitty oh, and, cool. and yeah and so i'm searching i'm searching and i, I found it was with an e but anyways most <laughs> fans have their debut ep or their first album you know um I don't know. I'm just going to take names out because I can't remember which ones have done it, but it'd be like Black Sabbath, Black Sabbath or Van Halen, Van Halen. And this was like your third one after the EP. Why, why did you go with uh, the original name Diamonds? Did you guys run out of ideas or? <laughs> uh, well, we're, we were never short of ideas. We were just kind of short on time because we were always touring. But um, the yeah. reality is we just thought we finally funnily enough, after all that time, finally found our sound that we were always working towards from day one. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like, you know, it's got to be the album that you think represents you the best. And we thought that one, we'd finally, you know, reached our stride with our sound. Because um, when we were younger, we would just always kind of rip off all the bands we liked. And then as we got older, we kind of grew into our own, I think. So. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, so your, your last couple years, you've been, um, you, I think you've been doing a little bit more solo stuff and we're going to get into your new solo album coming out in the summer. Um, so what is it for, um, your fans? Like, um, you've got us all confused. Um, first you say you're a freaky girl and then you look back in history, you ain't that kind of girl, like, which is it? Like, come on. Give uh, me both. Me. I mean, they both kind of mean the same thing, you know, like, okay. um, both people who just don't and have never fit in, never like, you know, it's like always been fitting whatever that term is. Is it round, no, square peg in a round hole yeah. or whatever? It's always felt like that, you know, for me, um, just growing up um, really? as a Indian female who's into heavy metal and just, you know, my parents never really, they weren't 
they're definitely not metalheads. And it, what didn't, it wasn't multi-generational in my household. That's for damn sure. And right. just somehow I got into punk music, got to, I got into metal music. I've always felt like a freak, like a freak of nature. And um, really? I think that came out in a lot of the songs that we wrote about the subject matter. Yeah. Um, so I think they both actually like are saying kind of the same thing, but in two different ways. Right, for sure. And um, in that in that song, um, Freaky, um, I don't know if it's just me. I always do this to people in interview, like Greta Van Fleet. There's about 500 comments on one of my interviews with them. They're all saying, why do you compare them? I'm not comparing. I'm just saying I hear a sound in there. There's a point in that song, and call me an idiot if you want, um, because you won't be the first or the last or whatever. Um, I hear a bit of Concrete Blonde in there. Um, I don't That's know. Cool. Do you, did you have any kind of influence in that style? Like, I know I can hear the cure in there a little bit at times. Yeah, I mean, um, to be honest, I wasn't fully involved in the songwriting on that, only that track um, in my newest stuff because I was working with a friend of mine who, uh, he actually produced all the Johnny Marr solo albums. His name's James Dobiak, and he goes under... Dobiak for his solo stuff, but um, he's from um, England. He lives in Manchester. He's right. fully immersed in that world. And um, I was working on a new, you know, changing my sound, changing my style, and just like indulging myself a lot more. Mm -hmm. um, my other, you know, my other likes in music and my other influences in, in, in music, maybe another side of rock, if you will. But um, yeah like synth based stuff and um it, he brought me that song um almost to an extent almost fully completed which is not something i've ever actually done before um mm -hmm. but i thought the song was cool and yeah. Uh, yeah i think it has that like kind of british sound and um yeah yeah and it was kind of written by um him and a friend or really one of his friends too that he works with a lot and so it was kind of like a cool pop track that's already he'd actually already recorded it which again i've never really done so it's almost like a cover um oh okay the yeah video, the video was amazing who who's in charge of shooting the video that's my cousin my cousin is out here yeah shout out to your cousin who's your cousin uh her uh she goes under wolfie ryo and okay. um she edits film she's a very creative person she's a painter she's obviously can do a music video here and there when she finds time yeah. she's exceptionally busy but yeah it was really fun to work with her um it was in the middle of you know LA was completely shut down when we filmed it and I had all these lofty ideas you know yeah uh, like rolling down being like the only person rolling down Hollywood Boulevard like nobody would have been around not a car not a person but then I was like the only th people out right now are cops, so it's like <laughs> it <could> almost <laughs> it's like be the a worst thing to do. But be kind so of seen from thinner, or no, the the stand, Stephen King, the stand where everybody was like, oh, I shouldn't say this morbidly, but everybody <laughs> was not there. It was like pretty isolated. Yeah, for sure, that would have been really cool. Yeah, but you know, like that's the one thing that'll happen in the middle of pandemic i suppose is that there's no one on the streets but mm -hmm. cops and cameras <laughs> so we just yeah. didn't want to mess with it you know like she's like we need a permit we need that just because we're so it's almost easier to do it when it's busy and there's people around you can kind of get away with more but yeah, yeah for cool. sure ride my bike down all the empty streets and stuff but nice. we ended up just doing it in her apartment which is obviously a cool like kind of space and just yeah. came together there's another video that i made as well with her that i just have been sitting on for months and months because um i never put out my ep yet even though it was meant to come out probably i was thinking of putting it out like may of 2020 really yeah. so time has flown obviously but i will get it out eventually this summer okay that's what you're talking about snacks yeah it's going to be called snacks interesting okay um all right, you got to tell me. Where did you come up with that name? I mean, it's not that deep. I just like snacks, and it's um, <laughs> there's six, <laughs> there's six little snacks on there. It's a lot different than uh, oh, like okay. stuff did before. There's a cover. 
um, yeah. which I recorded ages ago, but now we've had a harder time clearing it since Eddie Van Halen died. So I'm just kind of waiting. That's a big reason for the delay as well, was just getting that song cleared. What, oh, can you name the song or obviously not? Yeah, talking about love. We just oh, right on. Waiting and waiting. But um, I probably should have applied for that prior to all of that because now it's uh, my different story kind of getting Van Halen covers approved and yeah um, and it was yeah it's, I'm a huge fan and I just kind of wanted to put a twist on it right to yeah to bring it maybe that song to a different audience somebody who would never listen to rock and roll music the song's a great there, song there's uh that's that's great that you would do that and you're you're, you're gonna cover it in a different angle because um you I think you've heard of Hollywood Gods and Monsters now yeah that's the bassist from steel panthers new band is that the case yeah yeah it's, it's lexi okay. fog well travis haley and diggity dave from mtv's um pimp my ride and his wife and there's a few other guys that played in the same band as um do, 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 one of the guitar i can't even think of his freaking name um one of the guitar players for uh, kiss but anyways, yeah, it's about seven piece. But what they do is they bring all kinds of music from like disco, techno, um, rock, um, soft rock, 80s rock, 70s classic rock, and they meld it into one song. And at first you think that's just the most ridiculous idea, but it actually, the way they do it. Like all my favorite genres in one and up to and including like classic techno, classic house. Like yeah. I love all that stuff. So that sounds yeah. cool to me. Yeah, you got to check them out. I mean, they're they're starting to play a lot. But, um, okay, so the album Snacks is going to be coming out, you said, at the end of, um, well, when you get clearance on that one song. Um, describe the style, because everybody knows you from, like, sort of a, almost a Lee Aaron kind of a great singing voice. <laughs> Am I right? Yeah. It's um, a good guitar crunchy sound, that kind of a sound. You, 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 your sound is unique as well, but... This album, from what I understand, from what I've read in different reviews uh, or magazines that you've been interviewed by, um, it's going to have more of a a pop sound? or Yeah, it's more like pop. It's more new wave. There's synths in there, which I love synths. And um, it's, uh, I'm going to, yeah, um, it's more like, um, it's just more like 80s influence, but more the other side of the world that was going on then, which is like more pop and more new wave. So it's just like a, there's a dark undertone to it, um, right. like Depeche Mode. And oh, man, I love Depeche Mode. Kind of yeah. So that was kind of my influence. I don't know how it turned out because, you know, I'm me, but my influences, I wear them on my sleeve. I always have. Speaking of Depeche Mode, speaking of Canadians... Um, you're aware Envy of None, the Rush collaboration. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, I talked with Andy about that. And he definitely said that album has got a Depeche Mode style into it because he didn't realize Alex Lifeson was into that kind of stuff. Like they're friends, but they're not as yeah, tight as say you and I are, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> um, but he said, yeah, that's and actually speaking of Depeche Mode, I always tell this story, so I'm gonna tell it again. Um, I was in Mexico City one year and I was backpacking and I ended up going to see a cover band at Depeche Mode. I've I've never been blown away in my life. I was into the cure a bit. I was always into my 80s maiden, priest, you know, annihilator, Tesla, that sort of thing. But I couldn't believe how I was blown away by Depeche Mode. And that was just a cover band, just imagine. Well, that's it. That was just a cover band. Yeah, for sure. Uh, the, the full band is like really inspirational to me because... Um, a lot of bands who perform that genre, they like play to generally like tracks almost. Like it's like, because mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of them live. I still love them all. Like one of them, my favorites is Pet Shop Boys and yeah. Razor and I love New Order and I love all that. But Depeche Mode has all live instrumentations. They have a live drummer. Most yeah. of the songs are written by their guitar player, Martin Gore, who I think yep. is a fucking genius. Yes. Um, so yeah, they're like one of the all-time greats, in my opinion. I've seen them live a few times, and Sweet. every time they're amazing. Are you playing any shows uh, currently? Do you have anything on the sked on the dock? I don't. I didn't. I never put together a band for my solo um, stuff. I guess 
I just never got off the ground because I never put my EP out, but I suppose that's something I should start thinking about. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, uh, who knows I'm how. I'm singing one song with my friend Izzy on April 23rd. Oh, yeah? Nothing that... crazy. At the Viper Room. Yeah. Oh, right on. Right mm -hmm. on. We'll have to put a link uh, down there for uh, <laughs> like, like California <laughs> subscribers, <Yeah>. both of them. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that'd be pretty make cool. Make it three. What's that? Make it three. Oh, right on. Oh, you're the best. <laughs> you're the best. Checks in the mail. Um, I was telling you before we got on the, uh, before we recorded that, I was talking to uh, uh, a buddy of mine, Rob, from the Killer Dwarfs, who says to say hi. They love you. Hi. I love them, too. Yeah. They Russ. Be a dwarf. I'm very lucky. I am. Um, <laughs> They came and played here in Sault Ste. Marie a few years ago, and Daryl said it was probably one of the best shows, well, in the Sioux. They've probably done about 20 or well, maybe 10 over the course of their career, but sure. we put together a great show, and they're doing a show in Minnesota. I'm not letting the cat out of the bag too much in September, and he reached out to me, so I don't know if people can put two and two together, so I'm going to see what I can do, but um, what else was I going to say? Oh, right. Influences Canadian wise, um, and why did you get into singing? Canadian wise, I mean, damn, like we are so lucky in Canada how we have all our own bands, we have our own culture when it comes to music, and yeah, a lot of American stuff filters in, but like Americans don't know what they're missing out with half the bands that we get in Canada. Um, yeah. For me, like, I didn't, I honestly didn't grow up listening to Killer Dwarfs. I probably got into them, you know, after a couple of years of being in Diamonds and going deeper and deeper into, like, you know, the mm -hmm. 80s rock stuff. But, um, I mean, for me, like, Stephen Piercy from Rat, I mean, he's not Canadian, but I, that was, like, one of the first, like, yeah. eight bands I got super into. Um uh, another one that I really like is Anne Boleyn from Hellion. She has an amazing voice. She's yes. Like, yeah. For, oh, definitely. Video. Yep. Um, all, honestly, I liked all that 80s pop stuff from Alanis Morissette before she went um, all angsty, you know, like I really loved that shit mm -hmm. that she did. Yeah. Most people don't even know about it because they never got that. Yeah. Um, that never came out over here in America. It was all you know, on much music and stuff. Um, yeah, true enough. So, um, yeah, when it comes to Canadian bands, those were some ones that I, you know. That right. Was, so you've done, uh, you've done the Mork uh, cruises. Yeah. With the Dwarfs and, and I wouldn't, uh, uh, Paradise was on that a couple times with you. Yeah, yeah. Paradise. Did, how were those? I mean, I, I've traveled extensively, I think, anyways, but it's mostly South America, Mexico. I've never done a cruise. Um, I'm going to have to get on the next one. But, I mean, give us an experience of what a day in the life of the, a, a cruise would be, 24 hours of music. Oh, man. Damn. Okay. Well, I mean, I've been on a couple cruises. I We've played the Kiss Cruise as well, which yeah. was my first real cruise experience in general. And, um, I mean, for sure, my first thought was, like, how the hell would – you be able to do this without the bands um mm. just because there's a lot of I guess I have a hard time relaxing sometimes because there would be a lot of relaxing but um with the bands it's like constant it's like non-stop so on the morgue we'd me and DK wake up at 10 a.m coffee in hand because most of the bands that we want to see are the ones that are like super deep and they play earlier so um really yeah like you know like Vane played pretty early on in the day, I think they were like the second band of the day. So we were there at like up at 10, 11 or something they played. Um, wow. And then after that, you go to the buffet, <laughs> which sounds <laughs> crazy, but it's true. And they just have like every kind of food you could ever imagine. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, it's really pretty decent food because a lot of the people on the boat cooking for you are from other countries. Yeah. So they have great like curry and Thai food and just like all this different stuff, as well as like tacos and just roast beef and like whatever it is that people eat. Mm. Um, there's ice cream 24 hours a day and pizza, just like you're a five-year-old at a birthday party. Um, 
yeah bands play all day all night like so yeah, at I, the time I was like quite drunk especially in the kiss cruise days like my god but um I um from what I'd understand I understand there'd be like not just one spot from the play you could have a band playing on one side of the ship and then you'd have you oh, know yeah. russ and the boys are going and playing an afternoon acoustic set in a smaller yep. area and there's like also like five different venues or like seven different venues like i don't even know there's tons of different venues there's like um the the big one that's like almost like the meeting of the minds is when they have the pool deck shows because kind of everyone shows up mm -hmm. whether you're swimming or hot tubbing or just like walking around that's where the sunshine is so if the yeah. band's there um and you're from the east coast you're from somewhere where it's snowing you probably spend a lot of time up there yeah. um, the rest of it if you've ever been to vegas it reminds me a lot of vegas on oh yeah on the boat so it's like a big giant hotel with shopping with casino which um I used to spend a lot of time at the casino because you can drink and smoke 24 hours a day. No way. Uh, yeah, it's I guess you're in open open waters, international waters. There oh, are no yeah. in there. Um, so all the degenerates hang out there. That's again another meeting of the minds or what's left of your mind by like yeah. five, six, seven in the morning. Uh -huh. Maybe that's what Jeffrey Epstein was thinking when he got his island. He thought, well, I'm in open waters. Yeah, not <laughs> that guy. <laughs> anyways um what was i gonna say I had something clever to say i usually do i have one thing clever damn oh oh totally lost it anyways <laughs> um coffee or tea i'm um, trying not to drink too much coffee um but i guess being a singer i burnt out on tea so maybe i should just quit caffeine i don't know yeah, see, I've, I've never been a tea drinker. I've tried it just to try to look healthy and sound healthy and pretend I was healthy, but it just, uh, and then you hear these people saying, oh man, there's more caffeine in tea. And I'm like, oh, there really I, isn't. No, there's not. I Googled it. <laughs> I YouTubed it and I did everything I could. No, there's not. Um, because I mean, first of all, the first sign was I have a cup of coffee in the morning and I'm like passed out sleeping in about two minutes. No, no, there's no... It's a different caffeine, maybe that's what you're trying to sell us, but it's not caffeine from coffee. Like I'm a I'm a coffee guy, right? I don't drink coffee 24-7. I just drink it um well 23-7, something like that. But it's uh, 6 p.m. So where you are after 6 p.m. So you're pretty hardcore. Well, no, I don't drink it all day. See, I, do, I get up at 6 a.m. and I have a couple, and then I do my I work from home here until four. So I have a couple of cups and then this is just, um, I just want to show off baby pictures. So, yeah. Aww. Yeah. You want to see a baby picture? picture? <laughs> Aww. Oh, it's your granddaughter. No, that's my daughter. Oh, it says, I love grandpa. Okay, you got me then. Shit, forgot about that. Yeah, it is my granddaughter. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I saw that post you had on Twitter. It says, uh, heavy metal makes you feel younger. Yeah. I mean, I maybe it stunts you, but. <laughs> you know what? I love my metal and I don't feel a day over dead. I'm telling you right now, Priya, not a day over dead. No. But... Yeah. <laughs> I can see that too. It goes <laughs> both ways. Yeah. I'm like both the Crypt Keeper and Infantilized. It's, it's yeah. a combination of the two. Right. <laughs> okay. So I'll let you go. I won't keep you much longer. I appreciate your time. Um, I will tell Russ and uh, the boys you said hi um Say hi the, for me and um yeah i miss toronto i miss home yeah when's the last time you've been back up here like i mean um, we're, we're, almost a, we're almost a communist country you might not be able to get back in so you might want to get your visits in now yeah i mean that's a big part of the reason i haven't been home is because i don't um fully understand what's going on over there and so oh. i just kind of want to keep my toes um out of that water right now I'm telling you I don't, for the I don't lack know. of a better i don't mean i won't go too deep into it but it's 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 very no it's stark it's and, different and, and you're right about don't go too deep into it because you gotta be careful what you say or youtube will just that's it you get on that topic, yeah i mean right? that's when when people are being silenced you have to be the you, you have to ask all the questions i think um well, when when 
when credentials and people that held high esteem in in the areas of medicine, law, education, philosophy, all up until this happened, and then suddenly their their opinions you can't hear because disinformation. You got to kind of question it. That's what I think. Let alone plebes like us, right? Um, yeah. So I mean, I I I, I can't. Um... I, I can't make heads or tails of what exactly is going on. And I don't know that we're getting all the right facts to even um, formulate opinions. So to some extent, I just kind of entirely stay out of it and um, make sure I don't um, make any way. Yeah, I, med I meditate, <laughs> I go to the gym, nice. I read books. Um, I do that kind of thing. I think there's some um, truths that are p basically fixed that haven't been wishy-washy over the last m many centuries. And I think that's the kind of information that I'm looking at. So it's a lot of spiritual information, a lot of information about diet, things that I want to consume and shouldn't maybe consume. And yeah. I don't know. It's, it's different kind of information, not the kind of information that's coming at you 24 seven. It's more yeah. information that, um, yeah. And in, in the end, I go with my gut. Yeah. Excuse me? In the end, I go with my gut. I read what's thrown at me by the media because you can't avoid that. You can't. You no. Your email, you've got a headline. Even if you're not watching the news, social media will right. fill in the blanks for you. Yeah, so I get that point of view, and then I look at, okay, this doesn't make sense, and I'll go and say, why doesn't it make sense, and I won't just live with it, I'll go and take a look, and in the end, I use my gut instinct and intuition for my whole opinion. I don't get my opinion because Fox and CNN say it, because they've been wrong once or twice, maybe, so, and I'm not thinking on those two, because mainstream media is guilty of... Well, we're just living in a time... Um... How do I put this so that like you will think your neighbor is not telling you the truth when before we used to get a good portion of our news from like the village crier, right? Like the person who would have their eyes and ears open on behalf of everyone in their community or their neighborhood. And now it's like, oh, my neighbor said this and my neighbor has that, but you won't necessarily believe them until it's packaged up for you with like a you know, headline and, and put in, uh, on the newspaper or on TV. And um, yeah. I think that's doing a disservice to like what you're saying, which is intu intuition, gut reaction, and just it's making us lose faith in our fellow neighbors, our community, our family. Huge, huge. And that's, <clears throat> I've been read. I read a lot, but I mean, one of the themes I've been reading is humanity has lost its touch with spirituality. Whether or not you believe in Buddha, Gandhi, Jesus Christ, um, Islam, whatever religion, people have lost that touch. They, it's nothing but. It seems like it's nothing but commercialism. How can I get more, 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 more? Yeah, and that's if you don't have a spiritual connection, which is been, you know, my almost my primary oh. goal over the last little while. Um, I would say over and above everything else, and that's a big reason too that I quit. Um, my substance abuse situation, which lasted for like a good two decades. Um, it has to do with the fact that I don't feel like I can continue down that spiritual path when I am constantly, you know, um, opening up my mind and body to energies that don't suit me. Um, and so, yeah, that's why it's, if you, if you don't have that connection, it's very easy to, um, Substitute it. Yep, substitute it with things like the media, with politicians, with money, yep. um, whatever it is that you know got to you. If you want to say, I don't, I don't want to say any of those things are right or wrong, but I don't believe that any of those things are the truth or the reason that each of us were put on the planet. So well um, said. That's beautiful, and I was kind of going to turn into that thing that we talked about drinking and stuff because i've uh, fought the disease 
all of my life. And thank God. And I've seen on your Twitter and you said that you're okay talking a little bit about it. Um, things are going great for me now. Good. I'm not Good. drinking. And as we talked about before the uh, record button was hit, every time things went really well, I'd F it up. But now for some reason, something happened. There's always a time in your life that's going to happen. You keep hearing about it, but it's, I think it's happened to me because I no longer have any cravings. I can get over highs. Like I'm getting great interviews. I'm getting all these things coming up to months on end. It's been happening. Great. And the next thing I want to do is just set up for that next interview with the Priya, next interview with her Russ from the dwarves and that sort of thing. And I don't need to go and bury it. And I'm very happy for you that you said it's been the longest time. And we don't have to say the number you can if you want. But I mean, congratulations, because. Yeah, it's not even that long. It's just over two months. But after a long you know, time, I'll tell you. You I, know, you know how I hard know. it is. Yeah, I had a pattern of going so many weeks or so. And boom, so many. And this went on for four decades. I just yeah. turned it's 41 yesterday. Too. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, it, it, that's that's a long time if it's the longest you've gone. So I, I really am in your corner. As And there's so many musicians out there that um, I'm starting to get more of a, a segue in my interviews. I still do the, the music part of it. But now I'm incorporating these uh, musical geniuses uh, that talk about their struggles and how they've overcome them. And that's been really rewarding. Good. Yeah. I mean, people, I think it also comes down, going back to where we are at as a society, we um, mm -hmm. normalize things that maybe aren't um, productive or getting us closer as a whole to that truth, whatever that may be, nobody knows what that is. Um, yeah. When you get away from that path of finding what that is, that's how it's so much easier to fall into these um, patterns. It's so normalized. It's so normalized. There's barely any places, you know, to socialize without alcohol and without smoking and without just that lifestyle, um, you know, and, and the harder and harder I uh, it, it can be for me to or I'm trying to you know it's almost like exposure therapy going to a place like the rainbow and not having a drink like that's almost like the opposite of, <laughs> of the rainbow it feels like you know yeah that, the bar um of course which yeah I went the other day and there was I went to go see a band but everyone I was with was you know on their like seventh or eighth drink by the time mm. the band was over and I was just like that would have been me not even two months ago. And like, I'm like, honestly, one second away from going to the bar and getting a double and maybe even a shot just to catch up. And you just kind of have to, um, yeah, you just kind of like, I don't know, you have to rewire your brain. And well, that, uh, that's it. Neuroplasticity, your brain will rewire over months because it's taken months and months to get a certain pattern where all the neurons go this way and this way. So it does take a while of neuroplasticity. Um, and it's... My mom always told me to an extent that, um, you know, alcoholism, if you don't kind of start in the first place, um, you kind of can't build that, that habit. And she kind of said that to me early when I was, you know, 17, when I was 16 and 18, she knew I was drinking. Mm -hmm. um you know with my friends or coming home late and already being you know yeah. forming those patterns she's like you know if you don't watch out like this will become a habit for you and it's going to be really hard you know for you to break and I was like ah you know you think you're in control of it you think you're kind of just partying yeah. then you realize and it's not just drinking like for me it went into all kinds of substances um mm -hmm. it's horrible I mean I don't want to like glorify any of it but damn, they're like, I had a shitload of fun, but like at the same time, every time you want and you have a drink, then you want this, then you want that, then you want to stay out till like eight in the morning. And then yeah. before you know it, like another day is gone. You're like, what have I, you know, what have I done? I didn't write a song today. I didn't go for a walk today. Yeah. It's 8 PM and I'm just going to order pizza while I'm in bed. And like, I spend a lot of time doing that too, you know? And it's like one, like when you asked me about what a day in the life of the cruise is like, like, Last that would have been hard if you were sober. You're up. No, I wasn't though yet, right? Because it was like year, a couple years ago. Okay. And so one of the things that immediately popped into my head is I wanted to tell you that I got 
invited to come up and sing backups with by um by Rachel from Faster or uh, Paradise, Paradise City. City. Yes. Yeah, she asked me to come up and sing backups with Faster Pussycat because I guess her and Jenna and you know I I I think they all go up and sing with them. Um, yeah. Every time, but me and DK uh, spent all his time drinking Jameson in his you know his cabin and then by the time it came around i don't even remember like we missed the show you know what i mean i was like what the fuck like i can't yeah, believe yeah. i'm still doing this and that would have been so fun for me like i've seen faster like 15 times i feel like i know their set list like the back of my hand you know yeah. they're one of the big the bands that always came to toronto where a lot of american 80s hair metal kind of bands they don't come to canada that much so yeah, yeah. um they were really cool because I always felt like I had a connection with them because they always came out and um yeah and yeah that was so disappointing I was disappointed in myself you know like the yeah. next day like those feelings and yeah. I think a lot of people who have you know been in that been in that boat literally and figuratively um they uh they can relate to that story in one way or the other like they miss something important to them they miss a family event they miss mm -hmm. Yep. they're unable to drive home like whatever the story is like literally every person who drank for a long time has had some situation where they're they look back and they're kind of you know a little bit ashamed or embarrassed or yeah. pissed off or disappointed well it shows a lot of uh, integrity in yourself that you know i mean you're open about it because you're going to be you know there's going to be some people that may watch this interview and be able to really think i'm really fucking lame as well they were going to be like oh forget this you know because i mean they're not there yet like before when i was younger and people would talk about sobriety i'm not I, this sounds horrible but i was just like i don't care you know yeah, I just well, don't you're, care you're about ready, yeah. being sober and i don't even care about hearing about them being sober like that's lame you know like mm -hmm. that's how i thought about it because i just wasn't there yet myself i'm just being honest you know like yeah well that's that's perfect because you know what i don't know i'm i don't want to sound like i know it all because i know very little but i mean the truth in the matter is you hear about people that are successful and stuff and they've they've fought and won so to speak won. they say that you, you'll know when your time is there just don't quit quitting yeah it could take a few times um absolutely um especially too for me with like substances like sometimes i could take take it or leave it with some of the drinking but with like some of the other stuff I was like highly I don't even know it doesn't mm -hmm. have it like it doesn't necessarily smell it doesn't necessarily you know nobody will know and all that stuff it's a different vibe than drinking um drinking yeah. it's like an odor you kind of lose your motor skills like yeah. there's other stuff that you can do that nobody will ever know that you're impaired and like yeah. that stuff was became really appealing to me um because after a while you want to hide um hide what you're doing because like everybody knows what you're what you're all about <laughs> i know that sounds weird but it's so true i think there's other people that can like relate to that as well we, we relate trust me i know exactly what you're saying and it's true yeah yeah well, thanks for your openness, your kindness. And um, what's your favorite Killer Dwarf song? Because I'll be playing it underneath at some point in this interview. Tell me, please. Okay. See if I can find that. I'll borrow it off the internet. <laughs> so, yeah, thanks again, Priya. Oh, what's the opposite of unsubscribe? Subscribe, huh? Yeah, subscribe to the channel so we keep getting great interviews from great interviewees. And I hope this one had some sort of a comedic touch. But anyways, thanks again, Priya. And uh, keep, up, so keep up the hard work. And uh, yeah, it's all good. All right, cool. We'll catch up again soon in a couple of years or something. For sure. Thanks all for right. having me. Bye. Okay, bye.